So much like many people, I've been playing Tears of the Kingdom pretty heavily for the past four or five days now, ever since the release of the game. I just haven't been able to put it down, and I really wanted to play a large chunk of the game before I actually put out my first impressions video, even though I know it would actually hurt me in the YouTube algorithm. I wanted to make sure that I actually played enough of it so I can actually give a more detailed thought and first impressions rather than just a knee-jerk reaction sort of like an immediate reaction on my first impressions. I actually wanted to sit down, maybe go through one of the first temples and actually give my initial thoughts on what I've been playing so far. So I'm about 15, maybe 20 hours into the game and I'm really taking my time. I got past the first Sky Island. I went to one of the first temples and right now I'm just kind of shrine grinding, just trying to build up my hearts and my stamina. And I'm really just kind of exploring the world of Hyrule and seeing, you know, what are the things I could do? I'm just kind of enjoying myself. I don't want to rush to get the game done. I'm not in a hurry to actually do a finalized review. This is my first impression, and I'm really enjoying what I'm playing so far. One of the things I really enjoy about this game, as well as Breath of the Wild, is they really innovated the Zelda formula. Instead of going to one dungeon, getting an item that will let you go to the next dungeon, they throw you in this open world of Hyrule and say, hey, you go figure it out. Like, here's your main quest. You can run and go do this, 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 and this. You can do whatever you want to do. And when it comes to Tears of the Kingdom, they take that idea that happened in Breath of the Wild and they expand it even more, giving you even more powers like Ultra Hand and stuff where you can build whatever you want. And it really innovates how you complete certain tasks in the game, whether it be temples or dungeons or shrines you have your task in front of you and then you create whatever you want to create to just complete that task there is no one way to complete a task in this game and that's one thing that i find fantastic because what worked for you probably didn't work for me and i probably did something completely different but we all got to the same end game at in the end of the shrine. So that's something I really enjoyed was having multiple different solutions to a problem. And it just opens up this giant sandbox of just exploration and just doing what you want. I think the story as of right now, cause like I said, I, I just got to the first, you know, the first temple. So I haven't really been exploring so much of the story, but the story opens up like in such a brilliant way to where it doesn't negate breath of the wild, but it does set you back and that's something i really really enjoyed it was like a metroid moment where link is all powerful but then they knock you back down and like okay now you got to start again you hear some new powers go figure this thing out and i really enjoy that ever since they started adding more cut scenes and actual voice acting dialogue in the games I really feel like that elevated the Zelda franchise to a whole nother level because you're able to relate with these characters on a different level. And I really like everything that I've been playing. I see a lot of people out there complaining, well, how can people sit there and say this game is perfect or a 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 when it has performance issues, but something like Redfall comes out and it gets slammed. Something like Jedi Survivor comes out and it gets slammed because of the performance issues. And I feel like you're comparing apples to oranges because you're basically comparing Redfall, which is a $70 new release game playing on a console that is supposed to be the most powerful video game console right now to date. And you're comparing that to a Nintendo Switch hardware from 2015. Tears of the Kingdom is way more innovative when it comes to its gameplay. The story keeps you drawn in, and the fact that it's an open sandbox that you can go anywhere, it is one of the best open world games I have ever played. So me personally, I just think the comparison of the two is just completely ludicrous. And really, when you sit down and think about it logically, it just doesn't make sense. You can't compare the two. There are two completely different generations of hardware and two different completely styles of games. One had a lot of expectations. One, we're just hoping it works on the Nintendo Switch because the Switch is so old. And really, it's, a, it's sort of like ingenious, the fact that they did get a game like this with so much attached to it to run on the Nintendo Switch. But I've been playing the game pretty heavily. I'm really, really enjoying everything I'm playing with it. I can't wait to keep going further. I, I really like the story. The gameplay is so innovative. And if you are a fan of Breath of the Wild, 
then you're going to like this game even more, I think. So that is my first immediate thoughts on Tears of the Kingdom. I'm actually looking forward to jumping back in and playing this thing right now. But I want to know what you guys think. Have you played Zelda Tears of the Kingdom? Are you looking forward to getting it? If you haven't already picked it up, leave your comments in the comment box below. And until next time, as always, I'm Robert Storms, and that's my opinion.